America's Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, was finally in Beijing in a long-delayed effort to halt the slide in U.S.-China relations. The main sticking point is still Taiwan, with the Chinese determined to reunify it and warning the West to stay out of their core interests. My guest in Taipei is the Taiwanese Foreign Minister, Joseph Wu. Is the island living on borrowed time? We know that we have the ability to deal with the Chinese invasion. As China has stepped up its bellicose rhetoric, its armed forces have made no secret of their invasion plans by land, sea and air. So how much help does Taiwan expect from Washington and from Europe? Has it been promised a nuclear umbrella? What lessons is its government drawing from the war in Ukraine? And has Taiwan really done all it could to avoid a conflict with its giant neighbor? Joseph Wu, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Just two months ago, the Chinese military completed three days of combat exercises off Taiwan, and they told the world its forces were now ready to fight resolutely to smash any form of Taiwan independence. Are you living on borrowed time? Uh, yes, we are living under the Chinese military uh, at all time uh, for a couple of years. And the exercise that you mentioned has been uh, quite intense, uh, actually. And we've been observing the Chinese military exercises all these years. And the one in April this year uh, was probably uh, pretty intense uh, in comparison to other exercises, especially they involved a uh, aircraft carrier to the east of Taiwan. And we have been uh, dealing with the issue, not just uh, Taiwan itself, but with other like-minded partners. Is there any scenario that you can envisage in which Taiwan, with 23 million people, wins a war with a country of 1.4 billion? Uh, the same question has been asking uh, to Taiwan for quite a few years. Uh, actually, we're trying to uh, prepare ourselves for the possible conflict. Uh, for example, we need to strengthen our traditional military capabilities, and we also need to uh, uh, strengthen our asymmetric capabilities. And in fighting a modern war, asymmetric warfare is probably more important than the traditional. Uh, for example, uh, in the war in Ukraine, many people predicted that the, the Russians would be able to take over uh, Ukraine uh, within a couple of weeks, but it didn't uh, happen like that. Uh, the Ukrainians were being able to uh, fight on, uh, holding the Russian military at bay. And I think their determination their preparedness for the asymmetric warfare or the international support are making difference. And that is the lessons that we have learned. And we are trying to strengthen our defense capabilities. And the people's determination for self-defense is stronger than before. And Taiwan is also receiving more international support than before. And therefore, uh, we know that we have the ability to deal with the Chinese invasion. You, do you think, realistically, that your military preparations are any kind of deterrent to China? You said Chinese leaders will think twice before they decide to use force against Taiwan. And no matter whether it's 2025 or 2027, and you're already looking at uh, possible dates for an invasion, Taiwan simply needs to get ready. Why isn't Taiwan ready now? You've had plenty of warning that China is determined peacefully or forcibly to reunite you with the People's Republic, as they put it. Why, why aren't you ready now? Uh, if you look at a modern war, uh, we don't just look at the side of the aggressor. Uh, their military capabilities and equipment they have, uh, if you only look at the other side, you might feel that uh, China has uh, overwhelming power over Taiwan, and Taiwan stands no chance. But if you have a chance to look at Taiwan's defense capabilities, I don't think that uh, the uh, war can happen in that easy way for China to take Taiwan over easily. We have uh, lots of defense missiles, and our military is also uh, determined to defend ourselves. And I think the people are also determined to preserve the freedom and sovereignty that we have. And therefore, putting all these factors together, it won't be easy for China to launch a war against Taiwan and take Taiwan over uh, very quickly. Uh, and other than Taiwan's preparedness, uh, other major countries, uh, they are also uh, deploying their military forces or posturing uh, to deter the Chinese from launching a war against Taiwan. 
If you look at the U.S. military forces uh, nearby, and also the fact that Japan has been doubling its military budget for the next five years and to prepare for possible uh, countermeasures against the Chinese aggression uh, in this part of the world, I think the Chinese would have to worry if they start a war against Taiwan. It's, it's, it's one thing for both sides to stage military exercises, but if the worst happens and war breaks out, do you believe any other country will fight alongside you? Uh, this is a hypothetical question, and we always say... They that all are, until the war breaks yes. out. They're all hypothetical. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, if war breaks out, uh, the one who bears the responsibility for Taiwan's defense will be Taiwan itself. And we are determined to defend ourselves. There's no doubt about it. But for other countries, uh, I think the most important thing is for them to show uh, their determination to deter the war from happening. Uh, I think the war is going to mean disaster for a lot of countries. Economically, uh, half of the uh, container ships uh, of the world is sailing through the Taiwan Strait area. And 90% of the most advanced computer chips or semiconductor chips are produced in Taiwan. And therefore, th there's going to be a disruption to the supply chain. It will be a major impact upon the rest of the world economically. And I think many of the international leaders understand now, and they are trying to deter from deter the war from happening. And with this kind of effort, I think the war is not unavoidable and it's not imminent at this moment. This wasn't quite the question that I asked you. I'm basically looking to see whether you have any cast iron assurances that any other country will fight with you in the event of a Chinese invasion. Yes, that is yeah, a very yes, good question. yes or no? Yes or no? Uh, that is a very good question. Actually, I, we are trying to tell the world that the defending Taiwan is our own responsibilities. So the answer is no. You do not have any cast iron assurances that anyone will fight with you. Uh, that is not the way we look at it. There might be uh, countries, there might be people who want to provide Taiwan with support, the support like uh, what the United States has been providing to Ukraine. Uh, give us the ammunition for us to uh, fight uh, the aggression. Uh, but the fighting itself uh, in Taiwan, it's our own responsibility. The U.S. has been very unclear about what it might or might not do to help you, which may be, of course, down to strategic ambiguity, but it could also mean that they haven't yet decided what they're going to do if you're attacked. Which do you think it is? In fact, Taiwan and the United States have been uh, engaging in very close consultation and communication with each other to think about the future scenarios at the same time to prepare Taiwan the best way uh, Taiwan can get prepared. For example, the kinds of weapons Taiwan would need and the uh, strategy Taiwan would need and the kinds of uh, trainings Taiwan would need. And the United States has been providing these kinds of uh, resources or training and preparation for Taiwan. And uh, these kinds of efforts are being highly appreciated. And the U.S. decision, uh, whether it will get involved in the war or not, it's uh, the call of the president of the United States. But for Taiwan, it's our responsibility to defend Taiwan. Are you telling me you simply don't have any idea what the U.S. would do in the event of an invasion of Taiwan? Well, as I say, you know, we engage in very close communications with the United States, and uh, the question is not up to me for uh, the answering. And I hope that uh, Taiwan and the United States will continue to engage closely with each other in the preparation uh, process. Mr. Wu, on May the 22nd, according to Taipei News, you confirmed there'd been discussions with the U.S. about whether Taiwan would be included under the U.S. nuclear umbrella like some other countries in the region. What was the outcome of those talks? Uh, we engage in all kinds of conversations with the United States. And for any content of that nature, I'm not able to give any details. Are further discussions planned then on this topic of whether the US would include you in the nuclear umbrella? Well, thank you very much for raising that question for the second time. But uh, for any of the... Uh, uh, any of the uh, content of the discussions of that nature, I would not be able to confirm at this point. And you can't confirm even that these discussions did take place? Uh, I should not be uh, confirming that.
There's all kinds of cooperation going on, communication going on in between Taiwan and major countries. And in order for these cooperations to stay in good place, I should not disclose any of the conversations. Mr. Wu, how do you understand President Biden's words in September last year? He was asked if he was willing to get involved militarily to defend Taiwan, and he replied, yes, that's the commitment we made. Do you interpret that as providing you with defensive weapons under the Taiwan Relations Act or engaging in direct military confrontation with China? Well, our understanding is that the commitment is based on the Taiwan Relations Act. The United States has been reaffirming its commitment to Taiwan security by providing Taiwan with sufficient amount uh, of uh, defensive articles for Taiwan's self-defense. And if you look at the uh, Taiwan Relations Act, it also stipulates, stipulates that the United States would need to maintain sufficient capacity to repel uh, any uh, resort to the military threat or coercion uh, in this region. So the United States' commitment to Taiwan or to the region has been uh, rather obvious. And the U.S. officials' commitment on that is uh, rock solid, as according to the U.S. officials. And we don't doubt that. Uh, the United States has been providing Taiwan with uh, weapons. And in addition to the providing of uh, weapons, they also engage in service and the training of how to use the weapons. And because of these activities, uh, Taiwan's defense relations with the United States have been uh, significantly improving in the last few years. As you know, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has just been meeting with Chinese leaders. Foreign Minister Kin Gang warned America not to challenge Beijing over the status of Taiwan. The Taiwan issue, he said, is the core of China's core interest, the biggest in China, U.S. relations and the most prominent risk. What do you take away from that? Uh, I take away from that is that the Chinese threat against Taiwan is clear and it's obvious and it is something for us to take seriously. But at the same time, as I understand it, uh, Secretary Blinken also stated very clearly that uh, the United States opposed any unilateral change of status quo. That means the United States opposing any use of force by the Chinese side against Taiwan. And in fact, this is not the only country, not the only world leader. That has been saying that uh, in the G7 summit or in the EU-US summit or in other uh, summit, important summits, uh, the leaders always reaffirm the importance of peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. And they also oppose any unilateral change of status quo in this part of the world. And some are even opposed the uh, use of force. And lately, uh, there's also a new language coming out of Europe they are saying that uh, the peace and stability of the Taiwan Strait is an integral part of the global security and prosperity. And with all this, I'm sure the international caution against the Chinese use of force or attempt to annex Taiwan uh, is sufficient. And we hope the international community can continue to pay attention to the uh, Chinese motivation of using force against Taiwan. So you think strong words from the international community, strong words from the West are enough to deter China? There were plenty of strong words directed at Vladimir Putin before he invaded Ukraine, and the war went ahead anyway. So strong words maybe are slightly developed in diplomacy, uh, slightly exaggerated in diplomacy these days? Uh, that is a very good, very good question. In fact, other than strong words, we have also seen countries uh, taking concrete actions in uh, showing that uh, they have the resolve uh, on the uh, peace and stability over this region. Uh, the United States, Japan, the UK, Canada, and etc. They have all been engaging in the very periodic uh, freedom of navigation operations in this area. And many of those uh, surface ships sail through the Taiwan Strait. And these kinds of actions are just uh, actions in backing up their strong wars. And I believe that all those countries that I mentioned have a stake in the peace and stability over the Taiwan Strait area. And they are taking concrete actions to back up their rhetorics. Do you not worry that by seeking Washington's help, you're now caught up in the rock-bottom relationship between the U.S. and China, 
and that Beijing may be about to ratchet up pressure on you simply to send a signal to Washington. I guess the question is, aren't you in danger of becoming a pawn to be played by both sides? Uh, that is also a question asked frequently in Taiwan. In fact, some people here in Taiwan argue that the, the world conflict is between the United States and China, and therefore Taiwan should dodge the bullets from these two giants, and we should stay neutral. But I think the uh, real uh, situation uh, doesn't happen that way. The real situation is that Taiwan has been threatened by China, and the United States is trying to provide support to Taiwan. So these are the two constants, and we are living under these two constants. And therefore, a very important thing is for Taiwan to continue to consolidate uh, its uh, uh, relations with the United States on the one hand, and trying to uh, prevent war from happening on the other hand. And in our relations with China, uh, I can assure you that uh, the current government has been recognized internationally for being a responsible player. We want to uh, uh, maintain the peace and stability in this area by maintaining the status quo. And it's our belief that the status quo serves the best interest of all parties concerned. And I think this is also the position held by the United States, Canada, the UK, and major European countries. And we will continue down on this path to prevent China from thinking that they can take Taiwan over quickly. And Taiwan will not serve as a provocateur, but at the same time, we will not budge to the Chinese pressure. You've talked about asking Europe for support. Um, you said in Prague last week, in order for Taiwan to stay strong and resilient and to have the courage to continue the policy of maintaining the status quo, we do need support from our European friends. That courage that you spoke about, is it waning, Mr. Wu? Uh, I think the people here in, in Taiwan uh, feels that uh, support coming from Europe, coming from North America, coming from Japan and Australia. And that kind of support make Taiwan people feel that we are not alone in facing the military coercion from the Chinese side. You talk, in fact, this is moral oh, support, is it, you're talking about? Moral support? Uh, moral support. I think the moral support is very strong. And if you look at the languages coupled with some of the uh, concrete actions that I mentioned before, I think the people feel very confident that international support is going to uh, come to Taiwan. And in fact, it's coming to Taiwan, especially with the background that half of the container ships is sailing through, or container ships is sailing through Taiwan Strait. And 90% of the most advanced semiconductor chips are produced in Taiwan. I'm sure the international community will come to the realization that they will be impacted if the war is not stopped. And other than that, we are also seeing many other countries taking more actions. Do you think the West has been tough enough on China? You have in the past appeared to blame Europe and the US for not resisting Hong Kong's new security law um, and the trashing of human rights and civil liberties that, that came with that. What could the West have done about Hong Kong and what happened, what the Chinese introduced there? Well, Hong Kong is a true tragedy. It happened right before our eyes that the national security law was imposed on this place uh, where people used to uh, enjoy freedom and openness. And all of a sudden, all those freedom has been uh, taken away by the Chinese government. And we did not see this as an isolated case. We also saw that in 2014 over Crimea and the Western reaction to Russia in 2014 was not strong enough. And I believe that it has a direct or indirect uh, implication for the war to take place in Ukraine. And in East Asia, if we are not able to take up concrete actions against the Chinese way of doing things over Hong Kong, I'm sure the Chinese will be encouraged to do more in other parts of the world, in this, especially in this region. And if you look at the Chinese actions in the East China Sea, that has already gotten Japan very nervous. And if you look at South China Sea, it's more of a flashpoint than uh, the Taiwan Strait. And therefore, I think the international community needs to look at the Chinese expansionism or its imposition of authoritarianism on uh, this part of the world in a more serious way. And we need to take concrete actions in telling China that no, they cannot expand uh, their influences in this part of the world at the cost of democracies. 
you say that to prevail in this crisis with China, unity is our only path forward. But in a speech in March, your own president acknowledged serious political divisions among your people. She told the Hudson Institute that Taiwan was split and hadn't so far decided whether it wanted a relationship with China or preferred to be on its own. There isn't much time for Taiwan to make up its mind on that issue, is there? Well, if you look at the uh, public opinion surveys here in Taiwan, actually, we see a consensus. The consensus here in Taiwan is that we don't want to be ruled by China. The consensus here in Taiwan is that we don't want to accept one country, two system model and putting Taiwan as part of China or Taiwan as second Hong Kong. The consensus here in Taiwan is that we want to maintain the status quo. The status quo that Taiwan, is, that Taiwan people uh, is running Taiwan itself. That Taiwan is a freedom, uh, is a free and democratic country. So maintaining the status quo is already a consensus here in Taiwan. So if you are backing the consensus, the way you say, um, why is your party hemorrhaging support in the way it is? You did very badly in last year's local elections. You won only five out of 21 seats. And according to polling by the Taiwanese Public Opinion Foundation, more than half of voters would not support either your party or the other major party, the Kuomintang, in the presidential elections early next year. People are clearly disillusioned with you and your major opposition. That's down to a failure of leadership, isn't it? Uh, no, I disagree. Uh, when we do the public opinion surveys, uh, we try to find out what the people here think. Uh, for your information, there's a, a public opinion survey conducted by similar organizations here in Taiwan asking people what they feel the most successful area of public policy. And foreign relations happen to be the most successful. And in dealing with uh, foreign countries, uh, China included, I think we have adopted a right policy uh, to maintain the status quo on the one hand uh, and to try and maintain peace and stability in this area and to reach out to more countries so that Taiwan has more backing from the international community. I think this is the right approach and this is the approach uh, supported by the public. And of course, Taiwan is a democracy. People are free to think that uh, uh, one political party is better than another. And we need to allow the people to consider who is the best or which political party is the best for the country's future. And right now, uh, even though there's a debate, there's uh, different kinds of supportings, but it's the natural way of expression here in Taiwan. And if you look at the polls, uh, it's a high consistency in some of the candidates seem to be in the forefront uh, against others. And the kind of uh, tendency seem to be uh, very consistent. Very briefly, Mr. Wu, why not try a little yes. harder to talk to China? Your president has said she's open to dialogue with Beijing without preconditions, but even people in your own party, uh, the Democratic Progressive Party, don't think you've tried hard enough. A founding member, Hong Chi Chang, said recently, we have such a solid Taiwan identity now, we should be confident enough to engage in some exchanges. So why don't you engage, like the Kuomintang, for instance? Uh, we have tried, uh, but the situation is that China has been imposing conditions on Taiwan. The conditions, the conditions are being revealed by uh, Xi Jinping on January 2nd, 2019. And uh, with that kind of conditions, I don't think any sensible leader in Taiwan would or should accept those preconditions. Those preconditions will include that Taiwan should accept itself as part of the PRC. Taiwan should accept one country, two system model. Taiwan should accept nothing but unification with China. And this is something that the people here in Taiwan do not want to accept. And therefore, even when the KMT is back into power, I just don't think that they can or they should accept those preconditions. Once we accept those preconditions, Taiwan becomes another Hong Kong. And by that time, it will be too late for us to lament if China imposes another national security law on Taiwan. So if war does come, will you, hand on heart, be able to say that you did everything possible to prevent it? Uh, we are trying, uh, trying very hard 
On the one hand, our approach is to maintain the status quo and trying to uh, keep the peace and stability over the Taiwan Strait and have an open institute to invite the Chinese for negotiations. And on the other hand, we are also strengthening our defense capabilities to prevent China from thinking that they can take Taiwan over easily. And at the same time, we are engaging with the international community so that they can support Taiwan more and they can help strengthen Taiwan's uh, defense capabilities. And with all this, uh, we uh, are trying to deter war from happening. And it's not just Taiwan. We have like-minded partners. They understand the cost for the world if the war is to break out. And we are all doing what we can to prevent war from happening. Minister Wu, Joseph Wu, thank you very much for being on Conflict Zone. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Sebastian.